you could see that LSTM is much harder than fit for all neural network. It has a lot of parameters and it uses techniques like dropout. So if you want to train it, you're gonna you're gonna need a lot of computational power or a lot of time because uh, even like small LSTM uh, can take much more time and also a data and that's why even more time to train on. So uh, I'm gonna recommend you a special collab, uh, Google Collab, which is a cloud service for machine learning projects and you can use, you can actually use it for other projects but it was initially created to uh, educate and help people who just cannot um, do some machine learning interesting projects just because they don't have enough computational power or time. So, so this is Google Club. So we're gonna start by using uh, so Google Club is, was created by Google, and um, that, which means that you can create uh, Google Club files just like a Google Docs, and uh, they are going to be stored on a Google Drive disk. And then, using after you open a Google Club file, you can uh, connect to some vir virtual machine, which is uh, um, a two process, uh, a two CPU processors and a GPU processor. So you can have a um, you can use even a GPU acceleration, which is going to be helpful not on this lecture, but uh, on um, quite quite soon. But um, you need firstly to initialize this uh, Google Club in your Google Drive. So first, you need to just getting started. You can create a um, a folder in a Google Club and then you uh, a folder in a Google Drive and then you need to create a Google Club file. You need to click uh, create more and uh, you can see that you can uh, create here Google Docs, Google Sheets and you need to connect more apps because Google Club is uh, not a omnipresent thing and if you are machine learning uh, specialist you need to connect it and so you connect it by just clicking connect more apps then you can write down collaboratory you find this then you click connect and finally you can use uh, collaboratory in your google drive you you can see that now you have collaboratory and by clicking it you can create a file uh, which is gonna be a Google Club or collaboratory file. So that's how it looks, for example. And uh, why I recommend it? Because it's essentially a just Jupyter notebook, but uh, uh, only stored on a Google Drive and connected to some virtual machine. So it's not connected to your uh, local machine. Um, Actually, you can connect, but um, usually you connect to a virtual one. Uh, so it's just a Jupyter notebook with some new formats, uh, but in the cloud. So that's why I recommend it. So that's how it looks. Then you need to click uh, connect or reconnect uh, to your virtual machine. So you try to connect, connect, and here you connect it. So you can use it. Uh, firstly, after you know, before connection, you need to change runtime, and it just you click runtime, change runtime, and here you need to choose whether you use Python two or Python three. We mainly use Python three, so we're gonna stick to Python three. And then you need to choose hardware accelerator. And if you choose none, then you don't have an access to GPU or graphical process unit. And you have only access to a CPU. And uh, actually, there is, you can do this at home. Um, actually, if you use a small neural networks, like even LSTM 
with uh, as up to 100 inputs, uh, up to 100 uh, hidden neurons, you can uh, use without a uh, hardware acceleration because uh, GPU only will make it slower. Uh, because GPU can be faster on a huge neural network, but it will be slower because it has a larger constant. So you'll need to... So if you have some uh, minor project, and a minor neural network, it's a better idea to use none. But if you have a, a huge neural network with like millions and millions of parameters, then you need to choose GPU. And then you just press save, and if you, if you change to runtime, then you need to reconnect again. And after that, uh, the hardest task to, uh, to solve is to how use some other files. If we have uh, if we have a local if we run a Jupyter notebook on a local machine, we can use files from uh, folders. Like for example, you need to use some data. In that case, you just um, copy this data in a folder where Jupyter notebook is, and then you can import using some Python libraries or just an opening a txt file, for example. If you if that's where your data is. But uh, what to do if you have a Google Drive? and how to access your files. Because um, uh, accessing your, you cannot access uh, local files. Actually, it's, you can, but uh, you need to run special commands. So you just um, cannot access them without uh, special preparation. Uh, that's why I recommend to use Fuse labor library, which fuses your uh, Google Collab with a Google Drive, and now you can actually up upload Google uh, onto Google Drive your data and then use it just like uh, on a local machine. And you can do it running this whole code. So uh, in an example notebook, which, and actually because it's a Google, um, Google Collaboratory, you can share it just like a Google Doc. So I left a, a link and you can access and uh, view this Google Club notebook. So uh, if you want to use Fuse library, you just need to run these four code cells and you'll firstly install this Fuse library and then you, uh, you'll create credentials to uh, access your Google Drive, and after that you can, your machine can save, uh, vir virtual machine can access your Google Drive files, and you can use them just as on your local machine. And for example, I want to save some model. <coughs> In Keras you can save model just printing model.save, and for example, I save model here. So I print model save, and then I write a model save dot drive. So drive is now a root of your uh, file system. Then I write a number. Uh, then I write some folders where my Google Collaboratory is, and I can save. I can save my model there. And after that, you can access just Google Drive, and you'll see that your model is as a file here. And then you can download it on your a real computer or just left it on a Google Drive. So there is a no problem and you can also upload a files onto Google Drive like your data and then use it uh, using after installing Fuse library. So now I'm just uh, going to show you an example of, of using Google Collaboratory with recurrent neural networks. So in this uh, example it's quite simple we just um, uh, for this lecture, we are going to try the first uh, the first task that a recurrent neural network can is classification. So we have some inputs. This is like a vector. So we have an input on the first iteration, on the second iteration, on the third one, and so on. And we want to classify what this 
uh, sequence is. For example, we can classify is this sequence of decreasing inputs or something like that. You can uh, classify, um, you can, f oh, it has a real time application. For example, we can classify a speech. We can, in we can take inputs like uh, um, inputs directly from a sound file and then we can convert them into inputs, feed to a neural network and tell that this uh, sequence is a letter A, this is a B, and after that neural network uh, can successfully understand and uh, print out what uh, letters or words it has heard. So that's how classification works. So first we need to import some libraries and after that we uh, in that example, we have a random uh, parabola and we output it. We like have some graph of parabola. Then our inputs are going to be an y values. So this is y1, y2, y3. So our uh, input dimension is going to be 1 because we have just the one number. And output dimension is going to be three numbers. We are going to try to classify what this parabola is. So neural network is going to try to predict these coefficients, which are totally defined parabola. So our input is going to be pre predictions of A, B, C. And input is going to be Y. And that's why, because we have, um, I choose to take a 20 points. So number of input dimension is 1, output dimension is 3, and because we have 20 points, it's reasonable to have 20 is equal to time steps. And you can interpret time steps uh, another way. For example, we have, after doing 20 time steps, we set neural network to an initial site, so we uh, set its cell state and the hidden state to zeros and neural network will clear its memory. So every 20 iterations uh, or number of time steps we clear LSTM and return it to initial state. So after 20, uh, after 20 iterations it forgets completely. So we, have a, we, so we now can have a parabola and it's predicting something then we can have another parabola and LSTM will return to the initial state. So it won't remember this parabola. It's going to forget it. So it's actually quite handy using these time steps. And batch size was set to 50 just to, uh, for stabilization of learning. So batch size is just used for uh, averaging gradients and for making uh, whole training uh, not so um, random and more stabilize, stabilize. So I've created a function for creating, for, for creating these random polynomials. Then I've initialized this LSTM network. And here we are train. We do some trains using Keras. You can see that accuracy of the network is growing, only growing, and loss is decreasing. So our neural network gets closer and closer to predicting these coefficients of parabola. Finally, uh, there is a small problem with LSTM, that if you have a batch size, if you set your batch size for To 50, that means that if you feed uh, like 20 time steps, so if you feed 20 by 20 parabolas or 20 by 20 for 100 inputs, that in that case, uh, Keras will return an error. So you need always to return batch size equal to 50. So you need always to have 50 multiplied by n parabolas, where n is some integer. So you can feed to this neural network only 50, 100 parables, and so on. And 
it can be frustrating. For example, if we want to take one parabola and get it parameters, we need to uh, and just Keras uh, goes and goes with that error. So one solution to this is just a create a new neural network and not train it, but to set uh, to carry over whole weights from the, this. This is like a trained network. And we can create a new network with batch size one. In that case, we can, uh, we can use this network with one parabola or two or uh, what we want. And then we just carry over weights from trained network to a new one. And this is, uh, get it by special function which is called model 2. This is new network and we set weights and then we get weights from model 1. So this is our model one, it's already trained and it's very good at uh, getting parabolas. Now we only need to get it weights. And because model two is going to have the same structure, but only uh, we're going to change only batch size. Actually you can uh, change also time steps, but not input dimension. So you can take like a 10 points and a one point uh, if you want. But, but you need to create a new one and you get weights and then just set weights and it works. Just like uh, a normal neural network and it's already quite precise at uh, getting these parabolas. So finally we can fit one, only one parabola. And you can see that here um, neural network uh, gets all these 20 values and then it outputs ABC and uh, then we take this ABC values and uh, create a new predicted parabola. And you can see that all these parab this, this parabolas are quite close. And in fact, then we can calculate uh, an error of our prediction. Here is how it calculated. And you can see that neural network learned to, uh, to output this uh, ABC coefficients with uh, an error equal to a 0, 0, 1 to 0, 0, 2. So it's quite precise and because all coefficients are between uh, 0, 1 third and minus 1 third, it's quite precise and it has uh, an error of like 3%. So we get that this neural network uh, even after transferring weights, it works as intended and it's good at uh, getting these parameters from this parabola. So you can do the same, for example, with um, different functions and you can uh, predict what values it has. And this whole classifi classification problem can be solved like that with, uh, you can only change, like, you need only change to uh, input dimension, output, output dimensions to accordingly to a model. So that's how it is and how to use Google Collaboratory and to do classification problem using recurrent neural networks. And in the next lecture we are going to talk about predicting the next output using neural network, like prediction of something. Like for example we are going to talk about prediction of text, prediction of music, which will allow us to write some text or some music. And also you're going, uh, um, uh, you're going to know a lot about words and about some natural language theory and how we can apply, how we, in, uh, how we can maximize uh, making words more messy and uh, use mass to predict these words. So I think that's it and goodbye.